everyone and welcome to another episode of Wildry Garden and after many 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 calls for this I'm very pleased to bring you my first garden tour of 2024 and it just so happens to be in my own front wildlife garden this 20 square meter wildlife garden that I created in the spring of 2023 so it's just over a year old now so we're Today we're going to be taking a look around the garden, having a look at some of the different features, what plants are flowering, like this beauty here, which is one of my favourites and we'll come on to that in a little while. And some of the habitats that I've created here, if you've not seen any of the previous videos on the channel then do check out my garden playlist on the home page, just go onto playlists and go to my garden, you'll see some of the tours that I've done of the front and the back gardens where I live here in Essex and hopefully you can learn a thing, thing or two about what you can do with an average size garden because that's what I'd say my garden is front and back uh, particularly this front garden which is only 20 square meters and it's absolutely packed with many different habitats you don't need vast acres to create a wildlife garden guys and of course if you're new to the channel then do hit that subscribe button guys and the notification bell then you will be notified every time I post a video which is every Sunday at 6 p.m. and you won't miss a thing because I bring you weekly videos on all the different ways in which you can help wildlife in your garden and it's really because I started the channel in lockdown of 2020 to try and encourage as many people around the world this isn't just about gardens here in the UK this is about encouraging as many people as possible around the world to create habitats for wildlife because there's a lot of similarities. A lot of the principles that you'll learn from this channel can be adapted to no matter where you are in the world. So I would love to hear from you as always guys. Drop some comments below and if any of you want to get in touch and send me any emails uh, with photos of some of the habitats you've created in your own garden then drop me a line to inquiries at wildgygarden.com. I'm always happy to see them. So yes, it's around the middle of April and I'm so pleased to be bringing you this garden tour of my front wildlife garden. I'm not kidding you, so many of you got in touch after a recent poll I did on the community tab, which is another feature of the channel if you're not used to the channel or if you're new to it, check out the little community tab where I'm doing regular posts on some of the jobs I'm doing and little updates for you guys. And I did a poll to ask you guys what you'd like to see more of from the channel. Now I'm conscious that uh, my role is, as I've said, as I see it, to encourage as many people to create habitats for wildlife. Obviously my day job that I do Monday to Monday, <laughs> it seems at this time of year, um, is to go around the UK and further afield such as Panama, the recent videos I've brought you guys on that one, creating habitats for wildlife, that's wildlife ponds, wildlife gardens, wildflower meadows uh, and some of the hard landscaping I do as well to complement uh, formal gardens but still be beneficial for wildlife which is exactly what I wanted to do with this front garden which we'll take a look at in a moment. But the channel is really designed to help you guys and after doing that poll so many of you wanted to say that you wanted to see more videos of my front garden which wasn't even an option. <laughs> I didn't even put it on one of the options that you could click on. I think I did wildlife ponds, wildflower meadows, wildlife gardens, and so many of you commented below and said, your own garden, your own garden, show us your garden again. So I'm really pleased to be able to bring you guys this video today and stay tuned because I will be bringing you more videos of this front garden and how, and how it develops over the coming months because there's a lot to come, I can assure you. There are so many species of plant and wildflower in this front garden in the pond in the meadows in the herbaceous borders yes and i hope it gives you lots of inspiration but before we go on i should say as well guys along with the youtube channel of course the youtube channel was created off the back of the release of this which is the wilder garden book if you're new to the channel if you're not familiar with this book i strongly recommend you head to our online shop wildergarden.com to get yourselves a copy because this book is everything that i worked to uh, write over 20 years of experience of working with gardens and making them better for wildlife so it tells you all about how to make your own wildflower meadow wildlife ponds herbaceous borders what trees and shrubs to choose how to design your garden and for a mere well less than 15 quid <laughs> if you buy it from our online shop you can glean all the information you need as easy as that I think that's an absolute bargain don't you so yes, if you head over to the wildergarden.com online shop, get yourself a copy of this. We've now sold, 
I think just about 20,000 had a statement through the other day. 20,000 copies of this book to many different countries around the world as well. It was translated into German uh, and there was a German edition that was released. So yes, and that's been doing reasonably well but it's also been shipped all the way around the world. I've had people send me photos of this from far flung corners of the world, so it's absolutely amazing. And as I said before, the principles of this book can help you make a decent and very good wildlife garden, because that's the main reason that I created the channel, guys, as I say, to make the best habitats possible, because it's no good you guys going out there if you don't have the information. The wildlife is not going to benefit if you don't have the right uh, knowledge to be able to create, create these habitats. So. This book, this YouTube channel, and the wildyourgarden.com online shop, a lovely little threesome, a lovely little triangle, which should hopefully help you guys out as much as possible. Anyway, enough about that, but I just wanted to show you another way in which you can learn about how to make a wildlife garden, because I'm very conscious that there's a lot of people out there that are just starting on the first step of the ladder to create a wildlife garden. So hopefully, with all the three references mentioned above, you can do just that. So while I'm sat here, I might as well start with these beauties, which are my two herbaceous borders, which were designed for one sole purpose, and that was to attract as many pollinating insects into the garden as possible. And that's bees, moths, butterflies, hoverflies, many different insects, including flies, are pollinators that we need to be helping in this day and age, guys. So the more plants you can put in your garden, the better and another reason a good reason for buying the wild your garden book is because in the back of that book there is a list of all the very very good plants you can be putting in your garden native and non-native herbaceous perennials wildflowers so yes do check that out for a full comprehensive list of what you should be adding to your garden but in these borders i've got an eclectic mix of so many things including a couple of david austin roses which were in the garden uh, before i started the renovation so they've been here a long long time uh, there's something that Nikki planted years ago and they smell divine. They just smell incredible. They remind me of my gran because she had so many David Austin roses in the back garden. So they just smell. If I, I wish I could bottle it up and just send you guys <laughs> a little uh, sort of vial of these, uh, these scents. It is just incredible. It really, really is. So those roses are doing really well. I cut them right back before I transplanted them at the beginning of last year, in sort of February, March time, I think and they really have bushed out nicely, so they're doing fantastically. And alongside those, the absolute stars of the show at the moment, nearly all year round, is this Arisamum Bowls Mauve, which I absolutely love. One of my favorite non-native herbaceous perennials. Uh, and just yesterday, there were no less than two male hairy-footed flower bees nectaring on these two plants. And actually two, either side of the path, I've got a little path sort of in between these two and they were sort of going between the two for oh, at least 20 minutes. It was absolutely delightful to see, but not only that, these guys flower nearly 12 months of the year, so nearly all year round, and they're loved by a lot of butterflies, particularly things like the brimstone butterfly, which I have seen my first of the year so far this year um, in the front garden, and stick around because I'm gonna be explaining a little bit more about the butterfly, this butterfly's life cycle, and how this garden has helped this species in a few moments time. But these really are absolutely fantastic plant. They just keep flowering, like I say, and they just produce this lovely amount of nectar for all of the bees and other insects nearly all the year. So absolutely fantastic. And next to that, we have this towering, beautiful purple plant, which is another one of my favorites, which is Honesty, which is sadly, uh, this variety is sort of the naturalized variety and it is a biennial. Although I've very kindly been sent some perennial seeds uh, of some purple honesty that I'll be sowing in the garden this year by a friend who I actually created a stream for uh, last spring which is another video to come on the channel so check that out guys honesty again a fantastic plant it's a larva food plant sometimes for the orange tip and it's also loved by the orange tip of course my favorite butterfly and it really is loved by a lot of insects absolutely just insect magnet so these two between the two of them you can't go wrong. And then some other plants within the border. Uh, there's some lavenders along the front. I've got no less than uh, 20 foxgloves that I planted a couple of days ago into the garden, some in these borders, some around the rest of the garden that we'll have a look at in a few minutes time. And uh, the latest addition is actually some 
something you might not expect. I'll be doing a full video on this in time, hopefully when it works, but I've actually planted a mix of cabbage and broccoli within these herbaceous borders. So just down here, I'll put a clip in. Uh, I've got some, I think it's purple stemmed broccoli, and um, I can't wait to see this stuff come up because the reason I did this is to try and help our white butterflies. So in particular, the small green veined and the large white butterflies. So uh, hopefully they will come and lay their eggs on these plants. I'm not growing them to eat the vegetables myself, which is what most people will be doing. I'm growing them specifically for the butterflies. So I strongly recommend you guys just dotting some vegetables through your garden, some brassicas, things like Brussels sprouts, broccoli, cabbage. They'll all love these plants. They'll lay on them and things like nasturtium as well. Just dot them in between your other plants and I guarantee you'll be visited by a few more white butterflies, hopefully, than you would have been if you hadn't done that. So yes, a nice little addition to these herbaceous borders, but these are gonna get better, I promise you, as we go through the year. So let's go now and have a look at one of the other habitats within this garden. So next off, guys, we have my native hedgerow. This is only half it, the other half goes behind me and along this fence down to the front of the house down there. And in here I have planted a mixture of native and non-native shrubs and trees and boy has it developed really nicely. I've got things such as hazel in here which is really leafing up nicely now. Um, I've got some spindle which is actually in flower at the moment looking absolutely beautiful and underneath it I created a little mini woodland border so we've got things like one of my favorite springtime plants which is the red campion which is absolutely all through this border um, i've got cowslips that are in full flower as well which are near the front of the screen or <laughs> near the screen itself hopefully you can see those just down there um, i've got some forget-me-nots that my good friend eric brought me the other day so for those of you that have been watching some of the shorts i've been making recently i actually went to repair a fence for eric and replace all the trellis system uh, it's the latest short that i did so do check that out if you haven't seen it already uh, a very good friend of mine is about 80 years old now so yes went to help him out and he bought me just out of the blue randomly some more forget-me-nots because i mentioned i want some in, wanted some in the garden so i planted those yesterday and uh, yes hopefully they're going to spread their seed and make even more forget-me-nots into next year they are of course an annual um, we've got some beautiful uh, woodruff, sweet woodruff, which is flowering profusely at the moment, looking absolutely gorgeous. This lovely, lush, vivid green colour the leaves are. Um, and right here, spiking me in the knee, <laughs> is a very big spear thistle, which I've left in. I was in two minds. And now, you know, guys, if you've watched the channel for a while, I... I like to go against the grain, if you like, when it comes to gardening. And I, I have a very easy approach to gardening when it comes to a wildlife garden. And I strongly believe in letting things be to a certain degree. Yes, okay, we want to retain some of the formality, particularly here, because it's a front garden. And I want this to be a showpiece. I want this to be something that encourages people to have a wildlife garden, not put them off. So. <laughs> Yes, I've left this spear thistle in because thistles are, I'm sure many of you know, a really, really invaluable habitat uh, when it comes to a nectar source for a lot of insects, pollinating insects when we get through to the summer months. So I'm going to probably cut the heads off before it goes to seed because I don't want them going all through the garden. But again, I'll be torn because the seed heads are of course so good for birds like our goldfinches. So yes, I may leave it, I may not, to be decided. Uh, I've also got a little dandelion down there as well. Again, the dandelions, you guys that have been watching the channel for a while will know just how much I've been banging on about dandelions and the benefit that they have for wildlife and why we shouldn't be digging them out of our herbaceous borders. So there's dandelions down there. I've got more foxgloves that I planted and I've got some beautiful purple toe flax at the back here, which is just a natural coloniser in this corner. Can't wait to see that in flower. That's often home here in the southeast to the toad flax brocade moth, which is a cracking little caterpillar that looks like uh, a mullein moth caterpillar, lovely little, sort of little blue and black and yellow caterpillar. So yes, can't wait to see some of those again this year. But one of the best highlights for me in the entire 12 months that this garden has been alive has been witnessing the amount of brimstone caterpillars that are on the three older buckthorn in the front. 
they were just everywhere. I think I counted 56 larvae in the end and I indeed watched two brimstone butterflies I'm pretty sure emerge from this garden in July time later on in the year. They'll be laying their eggs now. I saw my first female brimstone last week uh, while at where I've been working just outside of Hitchin in Hertfordshire and yes I'm hoping before long there'll be females aplenty. Usually they turn up sort of in the latter half of April and certainly as we get into the first two weeks of May and they'll be peppering the alderbuck thorns with the little tiny green sort of lime green eggs of this butterfly and I can't wait to see them develop into the caterpillars. I just hope that the shrubs can handle the amount of uh, deforestation that might occur when the, the caterpillars get towards their final fifth instars and they've shed their skin a few times. Uh, yes, they are very voracious eaters when they get to that size. So yes, I'm looking forward to seeing those. I've got two privets, wild privets in here as well, which are looking like they want to flower within the next couple of weeks. Lovely little white lilac-y coloured flower on these wild privets. Again, great for insect species. So looking forward to seeing those in flower in time. So that's this side of the border. Now let's take a look at that side. So this is the other half of the hedge, guys. And as you can see, it's really filling in nicely. Uh, this hawthorn, for example, is really bushing out nicely. I have got one of my favorite wildflowers. Video to come in the next week or so on this particular wildflower, which is, of course, the garlic mustard, a larval food plant for the orange tip butterfly, my favorite, as you guys know. So really pleased to have this fantastic clump. It's like the most perfectly formed clump of garlic mustard you could ever imagine. Um, so that's really nice. If I come a bit further forward, I can actually show you guys some more. I've got some meadow cranes bill, which is going to go nicely in the summertime. And for me, one of the stars of the show at the moment, along with the bowls mauve, is this beautiful little greater stitch work, lovely little white flower, quite a discreet plant, but uh, an equally vital habitat nonetheless. More foxgloves I've planted through here. I've got some spindle. The honeysuckle is doing nicely now. You can see it needs a bit of training around these um, shrubs. And also the Victoria plum. So pleased to have a plum in my garden. I long for the day when I can watch hundreds of red admirals <laughs> on the fallen fruit in time so fingers crossed that was in flower a few weeks back in march so yes and i can see the formation of some small plums on there so really excited to be able to hopefully harvest these plums later on in the year um, i've actually coppiced one of the alders as well just to carry out some kind of rotational coppice management to create a thicker hedge and to maintain the shrubs that have gone in here and obviously for videos on how you should be managing hedgerows coppice belts um, and that sort of thing then do check out some of the other videos on the channel guys again as always there's over 300 videos on there so just go to the main page click videos and scroll till your heart's content i promise i can waste many hours of your life <laughs> with some of the content that's on there so yes do check out some of those videos i'm sure i've done a video that will be perfect for you guys and what you're trying to achieve in your own garden or your bigger several acre space or indeed your balcony or wherever you live um, what else has gone in here i've also planted recently a little white broom uh, which is really lovely it's just kind of finishing flowering now but hopefully that'll begin to grow and create a nice bushy specimen on this side of the garden Sadly, the rowan, for those of you that remember the video uh, that I filmed last year, some of the videos through the spring and summer, the rowan has not really fared very well. Um, and down this side, one or two of the shrubs in particular, this spindle has become very sparse with its leaf. And indeed, the birch tree in the corner is still OK. It's still living absolutely fine. But uh, yes, it, they're not they're not as perhaps as green as they should be. So a couple of them I've coppiced, I've cut back to hopefully give them a lease of life. So more, update, more updates on those to come. We've also got things like this uh, red valerian, which is naturally sort of popped up around here. Red valerian does very well around here. Of course, a larval food, not a larval food plant, sorry, uh, a very good nectar source for the hummingbird hawk moth, which visits these plants every year in this front garden, particularly if you're in the south and the east of the UK, you can expect to see good numbers of hummingbird hawk moths as we go through the summer. Yes, loads more plants to come out in here. I'm not going to give them all away just yet uh, because there are lots to come out that I want to tell you about. There's primroses and cowslips, which the primrose is sort of going over a bit now. Cowslips still in flower. And yes, there's plenty more stuff to tell you about. So 
Let's move to my left and have a look at one of the other habitats. Now, this area is perhaps my pride and joy of the entire front garden. It is looking lush at the moment, and it is, of course, my mini wildflower meadow. Now, for those of you that have been watching the channel for a while, will know that I create wildflower meadows of every size, from this size right up to several acre sites, which is a real joy to be able to do wildflower meadows. Of course, we've lost 97% of our wildflower meadows here in the UK in the last 100 years. So we really need to be doing everything we can to try and bring them back. And the concept of the Nomo Summit is something I've been begging you guys to um, take under your wing, if you like, and explore this year and last year. I really want more people to do it just let your garden grow let your lawn grow mow a path through it if you haven't already mow a path through it mark the edges against your herbaceous borders and i promise you it will look purposeful it will look like it's meant to be and your neighbors won't be saying it's just scruffy and untidy and you haven't been bothered to cut it so please do try the no mow summer concept if you can guys if you've got a green space that you can let grow i promise you the results will be astounding doesn't matter if you've think you've got any wildflowers in it or not just let it grow and tell me how much wildlife turns up I bet you'll be amazed now this little patch is not even three square meters um, and it's absolutely just packed with plants the grasses have really developed since last spring so I've got a lot of red fescue in here which I'm hoping I'm really hoping will attract some marble white butterflies which are just a couple of hundred yards that way down the end of the road and into one of the field margins so I'm really fingers crossed hoping they can be attracted to this little tiny patch of front garden because there's also some greater knapweed in here two big clumps of lesser knapweed nearer the camera which are their absolute favorite nectar source so I hope that manages to tempt them along with the red fescue grasses that the females will lay their eggs on for the caterpillars and in here we've got other plants that are looking like they want to flower soon things like this salad bonnet which is a great plant uh, there's some agrimony in there we've got some meadow buttercups devils with scabious three of my favorite wildflower birds foot trefoil i've got one here one there and one there oxide daisies i've planted a couple of controversial verbena bonariensis in here as well just to add a bit more of something else couple of foxgloves we've got primroses cowslips um, we've got this yorkshire fog which i'm hoping will attract some skippers in small essex and large skippers which we do have around here will all lay their eggs on this yorkshire fog lovely soft uh, like almost leathery um, like feels like a lamb's ear almost or the plant lamb's ear if you've got some in your garden beautiful grass that is so and there's uh, another plant in here which I'm not going to tell you about in this video. I'm going to make you wait because it really is a cracking plant that I've planted in here that I think will hopefully be the star of the show in a few months' time. So that's the little mini wildflower meadow. It's been teeming with life already. I've had ladybirds in here. I've had lots of aphids. I've had lots of caterpillars, of lots of different moth larvae. And of course, in the summertime, it was absolutely covered in insects so that's the mini wildflower meadow now let's go and have a look at something else well guys me being me i couldn't have a wildlife garden without having a wildlife pond and for those of you that have already seen this pond in previous videos you'll know how well it's been establishing but i really can't tell you guys enough just how much life has been visiting this pond last year i had um, blue-tailed damselflies azure damselflies uh, we had common data dragonflies as well all laying their eggs within this pond it was absolutely amazing to see and i just can't wait i'm hoping this year it was a little bit late last year to get it all planted because the large red damselflies come out in early to middle of the middle of april so hopefully around about now and i'm really hoping they come and lay some eggs this year in the pond that would absolutely make my year but as i sit here and talk to you guys i can see uh, pond snails moving around i've got tiny little water boatmen uh, youngsters that are now emerging within the pond um, i've actually got some um, toad tadpoles which are in here which is just beyond excitement um, and there's just so much life when you look around there's a couple of pond skaters uh, there's tiny little insects going around on the surface there's whirligig beetles it really is an absolute haven that's aside from all the different insects that are visiting to drink uh, such as bees um, aside from the birds that are visiting to uh, 
um, bay then have a drink from the shallow end which is brilliant to see and obviously the rocks down that end guys you can see are to help anything that drops in like a hedgehog there's also baskets down either side i plant, did some planting shelves and they can easily get out so there's no concern for hedgehogs dropping in and not being able to get out unlike swimming pools um, but plants wise we've got this bog bean which is in flower which last year had a fantastic um, one of the hawk moth caterpillars on it which was the elephant hawk moth absolutely brilliant there was a larvae on there um, but they're in flower now i've got the marsh marigolds that have been in flower for about a month now they're actually sort of almost going over a bit um, but also just about to come out we've got the water avens we've got ragged robin um, we've got cuckoo flower that was out uh, but i think has had the head munched off it by a snail <laughs> um, so yes and i can't wait for these lesser reed mace to grow their little sausages also known as the uh, the bulrushes that you see not the greater reed mace that can be very invasive within the pond this is lesser reed mace won't get much taller than this and has these lo lovely little sausage type heads on top of it uh, then we've also got the lilies in the middle which i'm hoping will come back this year um, along with a lot of the oxygenating plants which are going to obviously start coming up soon so fingers crossed we can yes get those back in the pond and they will start developing so yes we've also got the leaves of these lilies which are coming up nicely and if i turn the leaves over they're already covered in these little sort of gelatin sacs that are the uh, pond snails eggs which are just wonderful uh, hopefully there's not too many that they munch away through the lilies before they have a chance to flower this year um, i've got some water soldiers in the bottom which will be coming up shortly and this is just an absolute little haven again this is tiny this is about 1.8 by 1.3 meters something like that so yes it's absolutely tiny again not even three square meters guys so i'm sure most of us can have this and as i should say guys wildry garden the online shop wildrygarden.com if you need any pond plants now's the time of year to start digging a pond perfect weather we can supply you with the fleece liner uh, the, even the subsoil now um, we've got more aggregates coming to the channel uh, sorry to the uh, website and we've also got a whole new range of what i'm hoping will be herbaceous perennials trees and shrubs as well soon so the full works we will have for you in the coming weeks so check out the wildergarden.com online shop obviously for any meadow plants as well like we've just looked at uh, so for plugs seeds nine centimeter potted plants of grasses lesser knapweed cowslip primrose whatever you need it's likely it's on the shop and if it's not, not available now it's coming available soon the pond plants obviously are a, a little bit longer to wake up in the spring so they should be available soon if they aren't already and last but not least guys we have my insect hotel which has been the talking point of the street i can assure you <laughs> since it went in last year so many people have been stopping to uh, look at this hotel actually and it's been really nice to see the amount of families with young children that have actually stopped at the end of the drive and pointed in and saying look there's a bee hotel there's an insect hotel so it's really great if nothing else that the children are now associating these as a habitat that they can create and expect to see within a garden i absolutely love that and as i say this typically i've got one of the female hairy footed flower bees visiting one of the erisimums over to my left in the herbaceous borders absolutely love these guys and speaking of which by creating this insect hotel bug hotel bee hotel whatever you want to call it um bit of a, an insect nation really there's so many things using this right now i can see spiders within it i've had um, earwigs in it i've had centipedes there's um, wood lice as well that use it it's just absolutely alive but in one of these holes here i was absolutely thrilled to bits a couple of days ago to just be out here and i was just planting at the top just filling in some of the gaps for of the plants that um, didn't make it through the winter time obviously there's a certain amount of uh, planting that that doesn't quite make it through the winter time it's great for spring and summer but then it almost needs replacing in the spring so i've been adding a few things like thyme in here um i've got uh some saxifrage as well that i've been adding um but as i was doing that i heard a buzzing noise and i knew straight away yes i can identify hairy footed flower bees from the buzzing sound that they make 
it's different to a bumblebee you just if you know it you know it i can't really explain it and within one of these holes here there was a female hairy-footed flower bee that decided to go into the hole and actually spend the night there so that was absolutely brilliant to see and i think when i went to approach her she just then backed into the hole which was just fantastic so obviously using this as like a roosting site overnight a bit like the wild your garden roosting boxes if you haven't seen them guys and obviously for any bird boxes um, bird food bird feeders but particularly the roosting box as well then check out the online shop a whole range of bird boxes on there for you guys so you can help uh, birds all the way through the year so yes to see the female hoe footed flower bee absolutely brilliant what i'm really looking forward to though is seeing loads of these canes exploding with life in the next few weeks as the red mason bees emerge and create the next generation so yes that's the insect hotel it's doing really well again lots more to come over the coming weeks so keep your eye on the channel guys and i'll be updating you in particular on the red mason bees and how the colony is doing well there you have it guys there is a whistle stop tour of my front garden in the middle of april i really hope you've enjoyed today's video i hope it's given you some ideas i hope it's answered some of your questions as to how the garden's been doing and as i say guys do stick around do hit that subscribe button because i will be bringing you more updates of this garden as we go through the next few weeks and months into the spring and summer or further into spring and then into summer and indeed into the autumn months to show you what a wildlife look garden looks like 24 7 365 so thank you as always for watching guys do check out the online shop as i say and do check out the shorts playlist as well where i have lots of cool videos that i'm uploading there at the moment of all the different wildlife i see and some of the projects that i'm undertaking so yes thank you as always for the support guys stick around loads more to come and of course many more videos on all the ways in which you can help wildlife in your own garden in videos to come thanks for watching i'll see you soon mm -hmm.